What's going on everybody? Hopefully everybody's doing well and you're in a warm climate. It's back to 40s and rain here in uh, Chicagoland. Not good, but uh, we're inside, we're getting stuff done. What I have for you today is a subject that'll probably be of interest to a lot of you, and it's about tools. Everybody loves tools, right? Well, what I found out when I left the dealership is uh, the other half of the tools that I'm missing. Uh, my Toolbox has a lot of great tools in it. They're all tuned into Ford. Working on Ford is what I use, what works, okay? But the other side of it is the specialty tools. So um, what I found out is I needed to go buy a bunch of uh, you know special tools that are just for Ford's shop equipment, stuff like that. So I made a list and I researched the best ones out there uh, based on reviews and what our videos say about them, how they're using them, what key features they had, stuff like that. And uh, I basically collaborated a bunch of uh, uh, stuff together and to two unboxing videos. We have two mass unboxings. And hopefully this is of, you know, it's, it's, you get something out of this video because it's not a regular unboxing. Hey, I got this thing. Blah, blah, blah. No. It's, hey, I bought this because on this particular vehicle it works great. You know, on the, on the Ford. So you're, you're getting more information than just unboxing and advertising for a tool. Um, the other note is, talk about that, I bought all these tools myself, no one sent me these tools, so this is my true and honest opinions of them, and of course in the future as I make videos, I'll make my little comments about them, how I like them and all that stuff. In the meantime, this went long, so uh, I actually had to make it into two mass unboxing videos, but like I said, you should be, get, be able to get some good information out of them, not just an unboxing of a tool. So enjoy. All right, so we'll start off with the small stuff first, and we'll go on to the big boy stuff. Uh, so what I've been looking for for a long time is a quality suction gun, and according to the reviews and other people I know that have used the OTC gun, this one might actually work and stay working. A lot of times the little uh, diaphragm inside of the, the tube here starts to lose its uh, pliability, I guess you could say, from the different chemicals you put through it. And then, of course, it has no suction, and when you push it through, Nothing comes out, barely, and the rest of it comes out the bottom end on here. So we'll open this real quick, since it is a mass unboxing here. Let's see what it is in here. Uh, it's got the regular standard size tube on here uh, for filling stuff. So it's a little bit big, but you can put adapters on the end here to go into the smaller holes like the differentials on the Fords on there. And you really get in there and fill them up. So this thing is actually feels, I mean, it feels really solid compared to like the chintzy ones that I'm used to. I've gone through probably a couple suction guns and hopefully this one fits the bill. So far it seems to be really high quality from the handle, the amount of air pushes through there. And of course, even the end cap on here, it's just, it's just a lot thicker metal as you can tell. So hopefully this lasts. I got this for the shop. And then, of course, I got a Lyle wheel stud installer. These are very nice uh, for installing studs. Usually, if you don't have this, you use a bunch of thick washers. You place them over the stud. You put the stud through the backside, and you use a lug nut. Whereas this one's made just for it, so it's, got, it's a little bit beefier. won't deform. And it's got a few special features on here. Of course, you same thing. You put, you put it through the stud once it comes through the backside. But look on the back side here, where it actually gets pressed against the hub um, face on there, it's got a bearing on it, so it'll spin as you're tightening the lug nut on here instead of just grinding into there like that. So I've used these a couple of times at the old shop, and they work perfect, especially for you know pressing the stud in there perfectly straight on there. So that's a great little tool to have in case you you know damage the stud while you're doing a brake job or whatever. Uh, now you can pop it out of there and press it in properly once you uh, get the new one. And of course, what Ford shop would be complete without a pressure test adapter for the 6.0 liter. What this one does is it screws into the ICP port, take the ICP sensor out, and they screw this one into it, and then you can put a regular air fitting on this side and put shop air into there for, for uh, you know leak testing. And then of course, this also is used for the fuel bowl, the secondary fuel bowl for fuel pressure testing to make sure you don't have any issues with that causing uh, failed injectors or low power issues. Issues. One thing about that, in order to get it in there, because there's a line right next to it, I think a banjo line's right next to it, or the regulator, one of the two, is right here 
on down, you need to shave it off to flat on here so that's more rounded and that way it'll be able to get in there and actually screw in. And then you'll still have the flats up top here for screwing into um, the high pressure oil rail and such. And of course, I had to go out and buy a high quality fuel pressure gauge. I've went through a couple of them throughout the years and they just didn't last. The gauge on here cracks, they fall apart, they leak, whatever. Uh, so I went out and I bought a high quality one from OTC. They generally have higher quality uh, tools in general. And already on here, the weight of it and the way of, and the way it looks on here in person, it's got the bumper on the outside of the gauge here, which is always nice to have in professional equipment. And the gauge is very easy to read on here, a little, little bit bigger also. Besides that, the rest of it looks pretty much the same as any other one I've bought. Uh, but hopefully this one lasts because it's always a good idea to have a mechanical uh, pressure tester because a lot of the Fords went from the, Sh the Schrader valve where you just pressure test it. And that's the only way you knew to a fuel rail pressure sensor, which you can read in the scan tool. Great, easy, right? Well, now the newest Fords, they don't have either one of them. So you're kind of, you're kind of out in the dark, you know? So you need to have a couple adapters and a, and a quality uh, mechanical gauge. And I finally went out and bought one of these. It's a, it's a 7.3 liter fuel filter wrench and from OTC also. And it goes in the way on the outside of the cap there to loosen it instead of right in the center there. I've seen some of the ones that go into the center of the cap actually break off the plastic on there, the ribs on there. So this one goes way on the outside of the cap. I mean, if you were to release a cap, would you grab it from the inside? And, and do it or would we grab it from the outside and get better leverage so this one made sense to me and it's got a couple of different designs on there for different style caps in case you use an aftermarket so this would be a nice addition to be able to take those off properly and put them back on now this one you definitely need to have you need to have a high quality uh, timing chain set basically for the tool set for the 5.4 and the 4.6 liter three valve engines, you definitely have to be coming across a lot of these doing phaser repairs, stuff like that. And you don't wanna buy the cheap ones, these wedges, because the wedge may stay inside there where it's wedged in the timing chain. And the, uh, the rod comes out. So you're done, got your phaser on, right? You go to pull out the, the rod and the piece of cheese down here, as they call it, stays in there so these ones from otc they actually stick into there and then they have ribs sticking out like a tree almost in there and then the plastic gets molded over that so it really can't slide off of there that was one of the design flaws i had early on so this one uh, is definitely a need in a, any kind of forward shop so i had to get one of these and from doing phasers while the front cover's off this will hold the phaser in place while you're torquing it and such now this next tool I think I'm most excited about, it's a um, battery tester, handheld battery tester from Medtronics. And these are basically the same design and same core technology as the handhelds we used to have for years at the dealership up until recently. And those were so reliable, they use them for warranty purposes, they actually generated a warranty code on there for, for payment from Ford. So these are very reliable, this is the one brand, the one brand to go with. And this one's the more basic model in this series basically because above this you test alternators and starters I have my own way of testing starters and alternators that I only trust over something like this so I just needed a high quality uh, battery tester that will actually detect bad cells and state of charge very reliably so I can sell batteries to customers or if they ask me to test it I can tell them yes or no you're going to make it through so it's pretty cool I'll have a demonstration on this and of course in the future because this is this is really cool stuff for the price. Now this one, to tell you the truth, I didn't know even existed. What it is is a tire sensor trainer tool that activates the new tire pressure sensors you may install on your vehicle or someone else has installed or you want to swap out from winter tires to uh, summer tires. And of course, they have different TPMS sensors. Well, you got to retrain them to the vehicle. And usually those tools are around six, $700. Well, they do all kinds of brands and frequencies, you know, Hyundai, Toyota and all that stuff. Well, I don't need all that. What I need is the Ford ones. So this one right here will program all the Ford uh, TPMS sensors and this thing costs around $53 shipped my door. It just has that one limitation. It only uh, activates the Ford sensors, which is just fine for me, obviously. And you can see how small this thing is. And all it does is wake the sensor up while you're in training mode. 
on your uh, on your vehicle, and I'll have a future video on that, and then it'll ID that, that particular sensor as being the right rear, left rear, whatever. So it's a great little tool for the price, and it's it's come directly from Ford, so you know it'll be compatible. Now the reason why this tool is needed is because the new sensors don't have a read switch inside of them to activate them with the magnet like you may have seen back in the day. So the old ones, you would still activate with, with the magnet, and then the new ones that are only activated by this, and then the newest ones that have come out that used to be have read switches in them back in the day, they used the magnet for, those ones no longer have the read switch, so you now now need this for the new ones also. So it's kind of complicated, but either way, in the end, this one will take care of it. $53. It's going to be awesome. So I'll have a future video on this and how well it works. All right, let's move on to the big stuff. Now, to tell you the truth, I've never had my own personal slide hammer, and now I do. And this one's a full-featured set, of course, from OTC again. They make real high quality tools and they're actually the tool manufacturer for all the Ford special to specialty tools so um, if you're gonna get anything I'll get OTC if you're working on Fords so it's a regular five pound uh, slide hammer to, which is the only size that I really recommend it's got the hub pullers and all that for axles and then it's got a couple other adapters this one's for uh, vice grips they'll screw in the back of vice grips right and then you slide hammer that what you pinch on like a, let's say a, a roll pin or something like that with the vice grips you can pop it out that way and you may think ah, oh, what do you need this for well there's a lot of times you need this and it'll make a, a job a whole heck of a lot easier. And if you don't have it, you're gonna be cursing the whole job. So you might as well just have it, have it on hand. And uh, when the time comes, you really be able to do it right and do it fast. That's the big thing. So it looks like a really nice full feature set on here, I tell you. And what I think I'm gonna use this most for is the 6F35 transmissions that have that left-hand half shaft leak seal problem. Well, you gotta pull the bushing out of there, and the only true way to do it is with a slide hammer. Otherwise, you're just gonna tear up the transmission even more. So this is a nice little set. I don't think it costs too much either. Now this one right here is my first uh, C-frame press. That is my mine personally, and it has all different adapters for doing ball joints of any kind. You can even use something like this for, um, you know, pressing out instead of pounding out U joints, especially for the stubborn ones. So this would be a nice full featured set to have. And this has got high marks for it, and as far as reviews, and it's got a lot of different adapters in here. And it was only around 250, I think, for this thing, uh, instead of around four or five hundred. Now, what's weird on here, and you get used to, you think, oh, that's the front of it, right? Let's open it up. No, you're gonna lose all your tools. You need to flip it over, and it's like this. It's kind of weird. I don't know if it's misprint or stuck on there wrong or what. I don't know, but that's it. You see, it has all the different adapters on here, and these. This kit's mainly geared towards domestic vehicles, you know, Chevys, uh, Fords in the front and all that stuff. So hopefully all these adapters, you know, they fit. There's definitely stick in here nice. Got a bunch of different ones here, and they'll be all inside of here instead of looking all over the shop for them. Different cups here, and they're really heavy, so they're, they seem to be quite high quality. Look at all the ones that are stacked over here. These sleeves are nice. All these different adapters, so I should be able to just about handle anything with this, which is nice. And of course, I just have to show this about about a hundred pack of white rags, same exact rags we used to have at the dealership. And I just had to show this because there be some people watch my videos from the dealership and they're gonna say, "Hey, they stole my rags." Uh, no, I can afford a hundred pack of rags from Amazon. So yeah, I just had to do an unboxing of that real quick. All right, let's go on to the heavy duty stuff here. Oh man, it's heavy. This is a really nice vise. It's got a lot of good reviews to it. It's got exactly what I need as far as uh, the, the design of it. It's what I'm used to. And then of course it has a really high PSI rating. Uh, so it can handle anything that I'm really gonna be able to throw at it. It's a good size vise. It's a six inch, what I wanted also. It's black, it's what I wanted. And then if we can open it here. Oh yeah, there we go. The top here 
That's what I wanted. This work area right here uses for a lot of stuff. If you have a wood bench like I do or a thin metal bench like I used to have, you want something solid, you do it right here. And this pad right here that's super beefy and solid is a good size. So this looks like it's going to work out. Awesome, awesome. The tools just keep getting bigger and bigger. I think this is the last one uh, that has come in as of now. As you can see, I need to buy a lot of stuff. So that's why there's so much stuff being unboxed and there's just constant shipments coming to the house. Now what this is, a Delta 8 inch disc uh, you know, bench grinder. Move it over a little bit there. And you can see this high, how high quality it is. It just spins and spins and spins. The bearings in there are real high quality. Now, the reason I got the 8 inch instead of the 6 inch is because they said the 6 inchers were actually bogging down once you started putting something in to start grinding it or cleaning it with the wire wheel, whatever. And I did not want to deal with that. So, this one's got a huge motor in here, it weighs a lot. And it should handle just about anything I have that I can put towards it. Now, the switch on here is pretty nice because it's hidden so you don't hit it accidentally and turn it on because this stuff can do a lot of damage to you. And then, of course, you got a different varying speeds right there. There's a work light and then there's guards and all that stuff. So, And actually, there's a fellow YouTuber out there that's going to make me a custom stand for this thing. I just need to open it like I just did and give them the dimensions of the mounting holes on here and the base plate so they can make me a custom stand. He owns a welding service and he's going to make it and send it out to me for free. It's so props to him and once it comes in we'll do a whole video on that and give him credit where credit's due.